What is up, Bell County High School? This is episode two of the Dudley Hilton Show. Um, I hope you guys tuned in last week with the Whitley County game. Um, we're going to be talking about what game this week, Mr. Hilton? Uh, we're going to talk about the Casey County game Friday night, but we'll go back and talk a lot about the uh, Macquarie Central win we had last uh, last Friday night. But had a lot of good reports on you guys on uh, on the show. A lot of people watched it and. Uh, Got a lot of great comments. So what y'all doing here at the high school is, uh, you know, is really paying off for all of us, and uh, it's a good experience for y'all, and, and uh, it's good, uh, good publicity for our football team and our, our high school because uh, we, uh, you know, we're proud of Bell County High School. I think we got around uh, two, 250, 300 views on the last video. So that's that's a good uh, that's good for episode one. But let's get into these questions. Um, um, what was your thoughts uh, going into the game uh, last Friday? Well, you know, it, it was a pretty long trip for us down to Stearns, Kentucky, and Macquarie Central uh, had a foot, uh, good football team. I told you last week coming off the show, they uh, they probably won the biggest game in their school history by beating Lexington Dunbar the week before. And, and I was a little bit worried about them. Got down there and found out it was their homecoming too. So their community and their student body was very excited to bring Bell County going in, uh, come in there, and, and they've never beat Bell County, but it's always a first time, and they was primed to get after us, and, and uh, you know, we just, uh, I knew it was gonna be in a dog fight. They had like 20-some seniors, and, and uh, but our kids uh, rose to the occasion and, and held in there, and when you go away from home and win a big game, and, and, uh, and you just better be glad that uh, you come home with a W. That's all right. Um, um, did you guys have high expectations uh, when you uh, like going into the game? Did you think that you were going to beat uh, McQuarrie? Well, I don't ever like to be overconfident. So it always a game is played. Uh, uh, it starts off zero zero, so you, you know you you can't say how many points you're going to win by or this and that before you go in. And and like I said, it was a uh, it was a uh, a game that. Uh, it was Nick, Nick and Tuck all night long, so it wasn't an easy game, and I don't think we was overconfidence, uh, uh, you know, but uh, uh, probably was just a little bit. But bottom line, we, we knew uh, we was into a football game, so we had to go play, and then, and that, I thought on the whole that's what we went and did. Okay. Um, how do you feel that your offense played? Did they play good, um, great? Well, you score 75 points, you got to do a lot of things right. So, uh, uh, we, you know, we we was uh, very explosive that night. We had a young man like uh, Cody Frazier just had an unbelievable night. He, he carried the ball 16 times for 331 yards. Uh, Will Dean carried the ball eight times for 73 yards. And, and Jordan Wombles carried it seven times for 74 yards. And, and, you know, that's a lot of offense. So you had 400-some yards of offense. Uh, I think we had about 50 yards passing, but uh, uh, we had close to, to 600 yards total offense. So, uh, you know, our offensive linemen get better. We went into the game, had two offensive guards, couldn't play because of one got hurt and the other was uh, pretty sick and he couldn't play. So we had a couple of new guys on the line. So anytime you can go in and lose a couple of players and, and, uh, uh, and, and score that many points, you had to be pleased that your offense done well. Uh, I think we had one turnover uh, uh, early in the second quarter, and it kind of hurt us a little bit. But uh, we, you know, been able to overcome it. Uh, we uh, we didn't uh, we didn't uh, uh, you know make any more mistakes. So knocking on woods, we're protecting the ball and, and doing what it takes to on the offense to keep the ball. Uh, talking about offense, uh, defense. How do you think they played? Well, we started off. Uh, we show, we made a good couple good turnovers early in the game. Uh, we did. Uh, uh, we got up on them 21-22 to nothing, and uh, we had a young man got hurt, and they kind of lost us a little momentum. We uh, we sat out there a pretty long time on the field, uh, and, and that was Sam Lawson. I think he's all right now, but. Uh, uh, you know, it took a little while to take care of business out there. I don't know if that kind of lost a little momentum on us, but uh, they kind of regrouped and, and uh, they started uh, moving the ball on us. And we give up way too many more, many points, but we, it, we just kind of stumped our toes. Last week we, we talked a lot about uh, 
not doing the little things. And we didn't get lined up right on defense. It wasn't our kids didn't play good. We just didn't get lined up right. And of course, when you make mistakes, it's just like in the classroom. If you get back behind in math, you got to find a way to catch up and do what you need to do. Well, if you get behind a little bit in defense, you got to find the problems and and catch up and need, uh, do what you need to do. But Josh uh, 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 Antonio Zachary led us in tackling. He had nine tackles. He had two interceptions. One of them he ran back for a touchdown. So we did a get a, a touchdown out of our defense. And anytime you you know you score on defense, uh, that's really a plus for your defense because uh, that's that's a team effort right there. Um, Trevor uh, Trevor Stepp, a freshman, uh, got seven tackles and one assist. Uh, Josh Allen played real well. He, a senior outside linebacker, had five tackles and two assists. And Nick Caldwell had four tackles and, and one assist. But I think uh, uh, we talked about the two interceptions that uh, Antonio had. I think we also had a foam recovery by, by uh, uh, Cody Frazier and another foam recovery by Josh Allen, I think. So, so anyway, uh, you know, defense, you know, got – Got kind of uh, uh, shamed a little bit because giving up so many points, but uh, don't take nothing away from Macquarie Central. They had a real good running back, uh, just like we did. So, uh, so he was a hard board stop, and, and Macquarie Central on the year is going to have a real good record. We're going to be a one about two or three that beat them. So, so uh, I just think still our defense played well. We just got mislined, and 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 that's what they've really worked hard on this week. Uh, talking about offense and defense, uh, do you wish that um, you uh, could have uh, done anything better to get more points, or like um, did better? Like, well, I don't know. Uh, you know, you you perfection. Uh, you know, everybody likes to shoot for perfection, yeah. but uh, it gets to the point. You know, uh, uh, we're uh, we're dealing with 16, 17 year old kids. We all are going to. You know, go 55 miles an hour. When you get the ticket, you wish you wish you went 55 miles an hour instead of 75. You know, or, or uh, you know, we wish things like that. But, but you know, you just, you know, you just sometimes lose mind a little bit. You know, we, uh, you know, we didn't get all of our great blocks, even though we scored 75. That's almost a school record here for the most points in one game. So, uh, we still didn't block well a lot of plays and. And defensively, even though we give up uh, uh, 40, uh, 43 points, there was a lot of plays we did great in. I mean, we really looked like a super football team. But we still made mistakes, and they, they took advantage of mistakes. So as a coach, uh, you know, I've been doing this thing for a long time, and, and you'll never, uh, I guess, make me uh, happy. I always pick out the bad things, no matter how, many, how bad we win or lose. We always look at the things that can help us improve. And, We'd always get better. Um, uh, what do you think about like uh, the failed two-point conversion on the beginning of the game? Well, you can't make them all. I mean, we we end up making seven out of ten. I think we scored ten touchdowns on the night. So uh, you know, we kicked one of them. Our kicker. Uh, well, we need to work on that part of it. But we chose to go for the two points instead of the one point, and we missed the first one. But after that, I don't think we missed another one to maybe the last one. So uh, you always like to score those two points. That's uh, that's a very important part of the game to to make those conversions. So so we're going to work on both sides of either the, the kicking game and the running game on the two point conversions. Um, the penalty at the beginning of the game. What do you think about that? Well, penalties, that's when you go away from home, you, everything going to go work for you all the time, just like you're supposed to. It's good to be home and, and maybe know your referees and know who's calling the games. Not that they cheat at home. They just – you don't have to worry about things so much. And uh, on the road there, we had a lot more penalties than we had all year long. And I don't know why that is, but but that's the way it works out sometimes. So we've got to cut her down, uh, cut her penalty down. But one thing we didn't do, we're holding – uh, maybe uh, jumping off sides, doing some little stupid penalties, but we're not going out there and getting a big personal foul where we're uh, doing a cheap shot or uh, acting, uh, 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 you know, 
maybe taunting the other team and doing some things we've done in the past. We're trying to knock those things out and act more like gentlemen and, and go play the game, but you're still going to have some penalties out there. So that's one phase we definitely got to improve on. Uh, you gained uh, 88 yards for a touchdown. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Well, anytime you score an easy touchdown, it sure makes the uh, coach feels a lot better because uh, you got that far away, and it usually takes you about 15 to 16 plays to drive down the field and score and hope you don't mess up and then fumble the ball or uh, get a penalty where it backs off. So you can score an 88 yard touchdown. It's uh, it's like getting a cake and getting ice cream and whipped cream on it and everything else, you know, that's, that's just great. So I think Cody Frazier ran that touchdown, so I think that's the longest on the year. So, so we're glad to get a, a one that far away. And uh, that's pretty hard running 88 yards full speed, and he's done a great job. Um, uh, the false start penalty, what do you think about that? Well, when we get those false starts, uh, you know, my offense and our offense here at Bill County High School, we try to – uh, get three yards and, and plow dust, you know, and you get enough of them, you get a first down. And, and uh, so now you get a penalty on the first play, and Mark moves you back to uh, have to go for 15 yards, and then uh, it's a little bit harder to make up. So we sure don't like to get those penalties, uh, especially early in the game, uh, where we can't get those first downs. Um, this is a player question. Um, uh, what do you think about Colby Frazier matching uh, – Tritton Humphreys seven touchdowns in one game. Well, that's uh, it's almost unbelievable. I, I didn't realize he had that many touchdowns. I don't keep up with it. I'm not a one man I mean, guy, a, a player. I usually hand it to the players I feel like that uh, uh, can score for me. And, and that on this night, uh, Cody didn't carry the ball but 16 times. That's uh, you know, and, and I guess you say 16 times and eight of them are touchdowns. That's that's 50%. That's a pretty good uh, average right there. But, uh, you know, Trey, Trey, uh, Trey and Humphrey was a uh, great running back here. He got hurt his senior year and, and uh, really hurt the team last year a lot. But for Kobe to come in this year as a, a sophomore and, and uh, score eight touchdowns, he not only scored eight touchdowns, he scored four two points conversions. So, uh, no, he scored seven touchdowns, didn't he? So, seven touchdowns, seven, six, 42, and he had four, eight, four two point conversions. That makes eight more, so that makes him having 50 points in a game. So uh, that's kind of uh, hard to believe that a kid can do that. But uh, I think if you ask Kobe and he could sit here in my place and, and who, who would he give credit to, he'd have to say a lot about his fullback and his offensive line up front blocking for him. So he can't do it by himself, uh, and uh, he'll tell you that. But uh, he, uh, he knows where the end zone is, and he keeps his shoulders parallel going towards the goal post. And, uh, you know, he don't, uh, he just, he's just a hard-nosed player. So that's a heck uh, a feat for him and, and proud of him. But I think he'll brag on his offensive lineman up front for giving him that kind of protection. Um, what is your uh, past with uh, McQuarrie Central? And uh, like, uh, what was your mindset going into the game, uh, having passed with them? Well, they, uh, you know, McCoy Central, when I was here before, uh, uh, they was kind of a stepping stone. They wasn't very much and everything, but they've come a long ways. And, and I went in the huddle after the game and, and talked to their kids and told them that I was proud of them, that they're playing football now like it needs to be played. And, uh, uh, you know, and you know they, uh, they have been a much improved program. So, my mindset's going to be a little different now when I go and play them because uh, they are a good football school now. Um, with the injury and the failed two-point conversion and the penalties and stuff like that, um, how did you keep the players uh, motivated? What comments did you make to them? Well, you know, again, we, we film everything that we do. and uh, We film from the back. We film from the side. We, uh, uh, we really uh, dig into exactly how you play. And, you know, my, my mindset or my, you know, what we're working on, our comments or motivating, uh, the film will give you enough to motivate because when you don't go and do your job or you don't come up and stick somebody and tackle like you're supposed to, then my job is to motivate you and get you doing what's right, uh, making better tackles or uh, running the ball better, keeping your shoulders up the field. So there's plenty of things to motivate you if you want to get better. Now, if you get satisfied, 
then that's another question. That's uh, uh, either, you know, I got to get tougher on you involved. But uh, right now our kids are, we midway through the season. We're, uh, I guess we're four and one. And, uh, you know, we got a lot, we got a lot of things still in front of us. So we still got a lot of things we can uh, use to motivate our kids. Uh, speaking of motivation, do you think uh, the pep band helps motivate the players? Well, you know, again, the last few games, where have we been? We've been on the road. Now, uh, you know, we played their uh, first game against Millsboro and had a great pep rally, had a great band, had a great uh, atmosphere here. And then we come back and played one more game on the road. So really, we've just played two. I mean, uh, yeah, we just really played two games at home. So when we get our band, when we get our uh, uh, student body involved in our game, and sure, it's better to play at home, and it, it's definitely on the road. So we're excited about Friday night because we're going to have our pep band here. Um, the uh, the uh, ROTC color guard uh, and car parking, uh, any say on that? Any? Well, you know, I get a lot of uh, – again, I've been gone for six years. It's something we really didn't do that much when I was here before, but uh, I know the Millsboro game that was parked out on the highway, 25E from – from here up to the bus garage, over to the Bell Central, and uh, they was parked everywhere when you got a big crowd. We'll have that same kind of crowd this week, and uh, I know the ROTC uh, parking crew out there will have their hands full, and uh, it'll be a big night for them, but get a lot of good compliments at how they, uh, you know, handle it out there. But again, that's a part of our program. Uh, you know, it's a Bell County High School thing we do, and, and we're proud that, uh, uh, if that's our position on, on helping out there parking the cars and, uh, and ROTC, uh, I'm very proud of them because that gives us a good shine for our high school to uh, be proud of what we're all doing here. Um, how do you think the team is doing uh, as a whole uh, this season? Well, we, you got to be pleased. You know, you know, last year we stumped our toes and didn't have a very good football season. and. Uh, uh, do a lot of injury. It wasn't nothing against our coaching staff. It was just uh, it was a new coaching staff. We hadn't really changed the whole uh, culture hour for almost 30 some years. So uh, everybody that's uh, ran this football co uh, program uh, kind of ran it uh, the way I kind of run it. And then, then Coach Mack came in last year and inherited uh, uh, some hard feelings of. Uh, people that uh, had to let coaches go and everything like that. So, uh, you know, he was up against the thing, but uh, bounced back this year and bring our atmosphere back. And Coach Max right out there with me and, and, and helped me big time, as long as some other, uh, some other good coaches and everything. But, uh, uh, you know, things are doing well. We just got to get our uh, uh, selfish away. We got to be about our football team. And, and uh, if we do that, you know, We'll, we'll keep getting better. But on a whole, I'm very pleased to, to be right here with the players and, and, and trying to fix this thing and, and keep going straight ahead. Um, what's your plans for uh, the future as far as junior varsity and freshman teams? Uh, well, we've had uh, so far, We uh, uh, Monday night, our JV team uh, uh, went on defeated, won the conference. We beat Corbin in overtime. And, and they're five and zero, I think, and so we're playing a, a lot of them. Our freshman team, uh, uh, they're they're four and one, I think. So so ours are about ten games that that we're playing for our young kids, and you know that's where you build your your uh, your future up, uh, playing your uh, your freshmen and sophomores on a that maybe can't get to play a whole lot on the varsity team right now. So you know they they look good. Our future looks great, and. Uh, you know, we're letting these kids play, and, and that's the only way you're going to learn, just like this show right here. Uh, this is our second time, and I'm already telling that we're better than we were the first time. So, uh, you know, that's the same way in football. You play one game, you're going to get better the second game. You play the third game, you're going to be better than the first two. So, so uh, you know, we've already talked to how we're going to improve things. Well, our players need to know they got to get strong. they got to get in the weight room. they got to continue to work. And they just can't be satisfied that hey, we're getting this show over with, or we're getting this football game over with. And if you do the, if you try to improve yourself every time, uh, you know uh, we'll be better than NBC before we're all over with. But uh, I, uh, uh, you know, again, our young kids just need to get in the weight room. We just need to keep working. Okay, um, you've won the state title three times, and. Uh... 
What's it like winning three times? Oh, it's a dream world, boys. You just, uh, it's just something that uh, it's hard to describe. It makes you hungry. You know, uh, I never dreamed when I started coaching, I'd ever win it once. I mean, now if I'd ever win it one time in my lifetime, I'd be the uh, happiest man in the world. Then you have to win it again, and, and uh, I'm thinking, God, you know, pinch me. I about won it twice, you know, and then, then go and come and, and, and win it three times, and, and uh, I don't know. It's just it's one of those things you don't plan. You just you just work hard at your job every day. Try to motivate kids to work hard every day, and 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 I won it three times, but I had ten or twelve teams was probably a lot better than the three teams that won it and uh, didn't win it. So so, but it's it's something that you know. My goal this year is not to win a state championship, but win this game coming up Friday night. That's our next game. And if you just keep your goals simple and keep improving on it, and you know, uh, the most important game is the next game. Now we're about finished with this show and the most important show will be the next show, you know? So so it's just, it's just one of those things you gotta do in life. And uh, I've been a real lucky man to win it three times, but I had great players, but I've had uh, some great players that didn't win it. So, so main thing is, if you just try to win one game, and then who knows? You, you, it's hard to say how many games you might end up winning. And uh, so, right now we're just going to keep working. We got a very big game Friday night. And that's our most important thing right now. Um, did you play football as a teenager? And uh, if you did. Your uh, your coaches, do you take anything from them that you use on our players? Oh, most certainly. I mean, uh, my head coach died at, uh, several years ago, went to his funeral, and he meant a lot to me. Uh, uh, a guy from down around Hardsburg, Kentucky. He, uh, you know, when you run, a lot, of, a lot of young men today are brought up without uh, fathers and everything, and, and they can depend on their coaches to help them to grow them up. And, uh, uh, that's kind of what I've got into the business. Uh, uh, my coach, uh, he was like my father. He, I'd done some things I shouldn't have done, and he'd bring me in my office and he'd set me down. He, he, he'd put that finger right between my eyes, and and, and uh, so you need that guidance. And, and uh, you know, I played there, and, and you know, I've had a few kids. Uh, they know I'd give them a shirt off my back, but in return, I wouldn't get out there and play football like they should. So, so we're. Uh, you know that's that's coaching. That's what you call coaching, and uh, I like. I'm proud today. I am a coach. I couldn't ask for a better profession to be in. Uh, I never wanted to be a principal or superintendent or, or or be in politics. I just want to be a plain old football coach. And and Bell County's given me an opportunity to come back here to help some kids. And, and you know that's uh, uh, that's what football meant to me growing up. And I played a lot of it in my young days. This is all we got for this episode. Um, as, as he said, he's just a football coach, but he's our football coach, and uh, we're thankful to have you, Mr. Hilton, uh, coming back over six years. Um, but, you know, you know, come to the games. Uh, tune in next week. Um, you know, go to the away games if you can. And if you hear this sound at home, you've got to stand up on your feet. It's It's – going to be from ACDC, uh, I think Hell's Bells is the song, and if you hear this sound, you stand up. Now, thank you guys for watching this episode. This has been the Dudley Hilton Show. This is Coach Hilton.